Today in the news, we're getting fresh with NVIDIA and we got some AMD rumors. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with NVIDIA. In this generation of GPUs, the company has pretty much refreshed everything. The RTX 2060, 2070, and 2080 all got the Super treatment, so did the 16 series with the 1660 Super and 1650 Super, without forgetting the uh, recent update to the 1650, where the base model now comes with standard with GDDR6 memory. Well, it looks like it's happening again, and unfortunately, no, it's not a 2080 Ti Super. It's actually another refresh of the 1650. The best part? There's two of them. This information comes from a finding by Momomo US on Twitter. In a recent IDA64 Extreme update, the software posted compatibility with two new GTX 1650s, one based on the TU116 chip and another one on TU106. For your information, the original 1650 and the new GDDR6 variant are based on the TU117 chip. This new 1650 on TU116 would borrow the same chip as the 1650 Super and all of the 1660 variants. As for the TU106 based GTX 1650, it shares the same chip as most of the RTX 2060s. I say most because the 2060 also comes in TU104 variant. So why would Nvidia do this? Well, compared to the original 1650, both the TU116 and 106 have the new Turing NVENC encoder as opposed to the Volta one used on the original 1650. Editing Snows here, so Nvidia updated their website with the information, which is what you're seeing right here on the screen. So they're gonna have all three variants sold at the same time. This is not good. People who buy lower end GPUs don't always do the level of research or have the same amount of knowledge as hardcore enthusiasts. There's gonna be confusion here. Anyways, back to the video. This would make these new variants perfect for low budget streaming PCs, given the new Turing encoder is vastly superior. What is curious is the use of TU106. This chip would still have tensor and ray tracing cores on the silicon. They would just be disabled. It looks like Nvidia is trying to clear out its inventory of defective chips as soon as possible. Maybe the RTX 3000 series is so good that there would be absolutely no point in keeping the 16 series alive. What do you guys think? Let me know down below. Moving on to AMD, there's currently a rumor that Ryzen 4000 will be delayed. Now, take this one with a hefty dose of salt since it comes from Digitimes, and while they have been right in the past, they've also been horribly wrong. Essentially, AMD's 3000 series is doing so well and there is so little competition that the company is simply planning on taking things slow. The report mentions that the earliest AMD will start manufacturing for Zen 3 is late 2020 with an announcement at CES in January of 2021. Whether AMD will stay on seven nanometers or move to five nanometers is still a mystery. Keep in mind though that this same five nanometer rumor was started by Digitimes. Personally, I don't think that this will happen. I still think a staggered launch for Ryzen 4000 makes more sense. Sure, the report says different, but the same report still mentions Rocket Lake being available by the end of this year, even though the Intel roadmaps that came out a few days before this report debunked that rumor. But if it does happen to be true, know that we will at least have a taste of Zen 3 with Genoa. Remember, it was only about a month and a half ago that Lisa Su confirmed that Zen 3 and RDNA 2 would debut this year. Speaking of RDNA, it looks like AMD has been fiddling with HBM. We knew from a really long time ago that AMD designed Navi, or RDNA specifically, to work with both GDDR6 and HBM memory, but we had yet to see the latter happen. Well, they've done it. For Apple, it's called the Radeon Pro 5600M and it has 40 compute units and eight gigabytes of HBM2 placed on either side of the GPU. It's a bit weird that it's called the 5600 despite having the same core count as a 5700 XT, but yeah. By the way, AMD changed their logo to be more in line with the Ryzen one. I think it's nice, but I still prefer the old one. What do you guys think? 
Moving on, I saw something pretty cool on Twitter from a phone repair company called Phone Fix Craft. They used a 20 watt fiber laser generally used to remove iPhone back panels and they removed the top layer of an A11 chip exposing its insides. Now, I don't know if the chip would still work after that, but I want to see someone use this method to lap a CPU top layer to the maximum and then just try overclocking it. If you want to see a cool video on that specific laser, um, I believe Jerry Rig Everything has one and I'll post it up here. Then we have the free game check. Right now, you can get Ark Survival Evolved on the Epic Store, a value of about $45 Canadian. You can also get Samurai Showdown, the Neo Geo collection for free. Act fast though, because they're only free until the 18th. I know I didn't talk about the PS5, but I'm keeping that for this week's live stream. It's going to be uh, this Wednesday, the 17th at 4 p.m., just like last time. We're going to discuss the PS5 and the incoming AMD releases, which should happen tomorrow. So put that in your calendar. And that is pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care. That was chair music.